game and a loss to Baylor the other night and started to come around from three-point range after going 0 for 13 in the three games prior to that with Ham, Davis, Smith, and Hughes, James Dickey in his third season, took this team to a Southwest Conference tournament victory and a postseason berth a year ago. But a big loss for him, suffering the loss of his point guard before they ever threw it up. No question, Barry. Lenny Holly was a guy they were really counting on to come in here and run this team so they could have their wing players, Sasser and Lance Hughes, on the wing. But unfortunately, that's not been the case, and they've had to juggle their point guard position. Good perimeter shooting team when they can get it going. Key player here. Hughes, the penetration, and the floater with the left hand won't go. Nicely to Moore to the basket. That's the way Houston wants to play, Barry. Get out in transition, 94 feet. That time, Gowar did a great job running the lane, running the break, getting it off for the easy basket for Houston. This is the fellow who's up. Mark Davis at 6-7, playing the point. Really more comfortable at the two or three. Houston has started man-to-man, -man, Barry. Interesting matchup is Anthony Gowar on, on Lance Hughes. Two number fours going at each other. Swatted away from behind nicely by Dave by Drain. Down low to Moore. And that has been one of the real problems for the Houston Cougars. They just are not shooting the ball well. Well, they're last in the Southwest Conference in field goal percentage, uh, just under 41%. And coupled with the fact that they're giving up 81 points a game on defense, those two don't bode well together. This is Carrasco down low. He, too, has had a shooting problem. Hughes dropped down to help out that time, and we got to travel. Defensively, Texas Tech has started man-to-man, -man, and they're playing behind in the low post right there, as you see on the, on, the, uh, on the monitor right now. Houston, seven consecutive losses, so they're obviously going to be ready to go today, trying to, to get away from that losing streak. Texas Tech, of course, a tough home to the Coliseum. How about that move by Davis to the basket? Well, you see the kind of athletic ability Davis has driving baseline and creating the, the, the dunk shot. Turnover as Moore lost the handle, and here come the Red Raiders again. Pull up Sasser. And a rebound Evans. If these teams want to push it, Houston probably will want to push it a little bit more than the Red Raiders. Texas Tech again starting man-to-man. Gave Goldwire a little lane, but he had a crossover, missed the shot. And here comes Davis and the Red Raiders again. Sasser was on an 0 for 13 shooting from beyond the arc, and then the other night against Baylor was 4 of 6. Raider, Red Raiders shot it well against Baylor, 53%, but lost by one. Lost intensity, according to that coach. Hughes on the second effort. Great job by Hughes. He's a 6'4 guard, Barry, who can go inside and, and get offensive rebounds. That's quite a, 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 a quality that's good for the Texas Tech team, and their coaches like to see. Evans for three. And Sass with a long rebound, but he can't get to it. It'll still be the Red Raiders' ball. Both teams have started man-to-man, -man, kind of feeling each other out. I think they will be changing defenses. You'll see some full-court pressure throughout the course of the game, and you may see some half-court zones as well. Expect from Texas Tech. We might even see a triangle in two. And as we speak, Houston has dropped into a 2-3 zone. They'll match up a little bit out of it and really try to watch the shooters on the wing. Stepping in front nicely this drain, but he couldn't control it. North Carolina jumping all over Clemson early in the ball game. Kentucky big over Tennessee. Boy, they're struggling. Temple big over Rhode Island. Temple with potentially two first-round draft picks. Sasser steps in but still can't get it to go, and the shooting wars continue here. Underneath Ham with the fall. That's the kind of thing they expect out of Darwin Ham of the five starters on the floor. He's the only guy that has not attempted a three-point shot this year, so they want him to post up inside and get offensive rebounds for putbacks. Carrasco on the baseline. Texas Tech had a little half-court trap that time. Anytime you trap, you've always got two on the ball. If you can throw out of the trap, you're going to create some open shots for other places. And that time, Carrasco was open on the baseline. That time, Crane just stepped in front. Here's Goldwire to the basket. Off balance. Rejection nicely by Davis. Here come the Red Raiders. Three on one. Sasser on the wing. Hughes down the middle. No basket. Player control. Well, the Texas Tech defense, Texas Tech coaching staff obviously does not like that call. It looks like the, the uh, Houston player moved in on that drive, but Texas Tech doing what they want to do offensively, pushing the ball in transition and trying to create some easy baskets. 
Now you're going to see a little full-court pressure now. This is more of a containment press, Barry. They're just trying to slow down the Houston offense, and, and they get a steal out of it. And a three-on-one again, and Davis down the lane got too far under. Fall away, Sasser won't go, but he'll go to the line. Well, that's two three-on-one opportunities the Red Raiders have not been able to convert. You know, that's the type of thing that teams have to do to beat good teams. Texas Tech comes in four and seven. Uh, that's a characteristic of a four and seven team, not being able to finish fast break opportunities. And I know that's something James Dickey has really talked about. He's trying to press a little bit more, as you saw in the earlier possession. Uh, just trying to, to speed the game up and create some offensive opportunities out of his defense. Neither team shooting the ball too well early in this game. Tech only three for eight early on, and Houston at two for six. And shooting has been a problem for both of these teams in the early season, and that's the reason their record is uh, what it is. Houston has just not been able to capitalize on turnovers. They've been getting turnovers. They got 31 the other night against TCU, and still were 23 points down at halftime. Exactly. They've just not been able to find scores, uh, Barry. They've got two guys. Nice two guys that scoring. And, uh, but that time you see Evans on the nice feed inside to Tim Moore. Tim Moore's a young man who's just become eligible to midterm, uh, played against UCLA in one of their uh, earlier games, and he's a very good athlete and youngster. They think in time, as he gains more game experience, can really help them. Lloyd will come into the ball game. Bernard Lloyd, 6'9", junior, out of Wilmington, Delaware, for James Dickey's Red Raiders. And Lloyd's another youngster who's become eligible at midterm, a junior college transfer out of Howard, which is the same junior college here in Texas that produced Mark Davis. Moore gets the first free throw. Moore and Evans, neither one was available to Alvin Brooks until just a few games ago. Now both starting, so Houston with a different look. Houston off to its worst start since 1974, a long time ago. And 34 straight seasons without a losing record is in jeopardy for Houston this year. Keep the trap nicely, Sasser pull up. Well, that's excellent execution against the full court Houston defense into the middle to Hughes, and he threw it over to the wing, and Sasser got the easy jump shot, and that's what Texas Tech wants to do in their transition versus the press, is to attack that pressure and score. Well, the other things James Dickey told us that he wanted to do was keep the ball away from Goldwire after the inbounds pass, and they managed to do that pretty well. Exactly. So far, Goldwire has not been able to get the ball and create off the dribble, and uh, so Texas Tech defensively so far is doing a good job. 15-32, remaining first half, 10-6, Texas Tech. We'll be back. The first time I switched pain relievers, it was from aspirin to Tylenol. Then recently, I switched again from Tylenol acetaminophen to Advil. You see, I got these really pounding headaches, and I found Tylenol didn't always get rid of all the pain. So I tried Advil and found that for my really tough headaches, two Advil worked better than two extra strength Tylenol tablets, better than Tylenol gel caps. For my tough headaches, Advil just works better. And for a cold, try Advil Cold and Sinus, advanced formula for the cold season. Delta Faucet has over a thousand different styles of faucets to choose from. So there's a Delta Faucet that's right for everyone's needs. Okay, I'll get the food, you get the water. Delta, the way water is brought to life. And don't forget to turn it off. Introducing the all-new Ford Mustang. It is what it was. And more. You know, talk, we talked about Mark D Davis at the beginning of this ballgame. He's a guy who can play all five positions. Yes, he's playing the point, but look what else he can do for you. He can put it on the floor, take it to the baseline, jams that time. On the defensive end, he helps out also. Gets a rejection here, and it starts a fast break. Coach James Dickey talked about Mr. Davis. Well, Mark is our Mr. Versatility. He is 
uh, played well on the front line, played well inside, out on the perimeter. He continues to get better. Uh, his stats are improving with every game. He's going to be a tremendous player. We knew he was very talented coming in. We didn't know that we would try to use him at the point guard. He responded in a positive way. He's going to be an outstanding college basketball player. Showing that today, as you can see, leading his club with 15 blocks and 17 steals. Takes care of the basketball pretty well. Red Raiders doing everything right early in this ballgame. They lead by four, and here's a turnover. Wafer got in the lane, missed the shot. Goal wire follows it home. Great job there by Houston. They're in full court zone pressure, trying to trap the ball down close to the baseline. Texas Tech needs to handle that better. They came out of the break with only two turnovers, but have one out of the timeout. And that's good coaching by Alvin Brooks for Houston. Boy Smith pulled the dribble up, and a good timeout called by Davis. There was no way they were going to beat the time across center court. They have one second left. So we're going to take a timeout as well. 15 on 9, remaining two-point game, 10 to 8, Texas Tech. Most people would jump at the chance. 10 days in South America. But I've done this before. I knew better. This was business. I was 5,000 miles from home. There was a lot at stake, and I was on my own. Trying to keep my bearings. Trying to negotiate. Sometimes just trying to communicate. All the while, hoping to pull this whole thing off as soon as possible so I could head back. Six, seven million pesos to your bottom line over the next five years. Yeah, I'm sorry, honey. I'm gonna be another day. You know, it's funny, being away so long. When you come across something familiar, it can be a pretty welcome sight. Going home, Mr. Reynolds? Halfway there. Hi. Is this space taken? No. Then I'll sit down. You want a Bud Light? Not yet. That's my Bud Light! If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. How about a little help here? <clears throat> well, coming up tomorrow, 6'10", inch center Heidi Gillingham and the 6th ranked Vanderbilt Commodores take on the Georgia Lady Bulldogs. Gillingham leads the Commodores with 17 points a game on a team with five players who score in double figures. You'll see Gillingham and the Commodores live tomorrow evening, 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific and what they're looking to is this national championship right here in Lubbock last year the Texas Tech Lady Red Raiders and there's the lady that led them Cheryl Swoops arguably the best basketball player to ever lace them up in college she came out of nowhere last year Barry and had an incredible run through the NCAA tournament she was the college player of the year for the women and she went to France tried to play a little pro ball over there it didn't work out and she's back here in Lubbock now working as a part-time assistant coach with the Lady Raiders, who not incidentally outdraw the men Raiders here. National championships do that. Bill Swoops had one of the great games ever in a national championship game. I remember Bill Walton in the men's NCAA final having a pretty good game. Bill Swoops, if memory serves, at 42 in the championship game. Yes, he did. Shot clock is one, and they just let it go. That's just a memory lapse right there. Well, it's a great job defensively by Houston. Not only are they in a zone, which is really eliminating penetration by Texas Tech, but they're very active in it and uh, moved the perimeter well, kept the ball outside, and just wouldn't let Texas Tech get a good shot off. Chad Collins is in the ballgame at the point guard spot now for James Dickey's Red Raiders. Drain outside for free. Yes. Yes, he drained the leading three-point shooter in the Southwest Conference last year, and he gets open again against a half-court trapping defense by Texas Tech. Both teams are defensively doing the same types of things, trying to force the action, create turnovers, which would lead to easy offensive opportunities. Houston doing a pretty good job of denying the ball to this man, Hughes. There he is for three, and it won't go. But Lloyd, the follow, and he misses. Hughes high for the rebound again. Loose ball picked up by Sasser. Texas Tech really doesn't have a true point guard in the game. They all are perimeter-type players, so when the shot is taken, Hughes, Sasser, every player on this team crashes the offensive boards and has done a good job so far. Davis, Davis missed the shot right at the elbow, and here come the Cougars. Goldwire to Wafer on the wing, and Wafer the leaner got it. 
And Barry, that's where Go Wire is so tough in transition, pushing the ball down the floor. 170 assists last year, and he really wants to find his teammates for easy shots. He did at that time. Houston back in the zone. Worked pretty well so far. Collins got in the air and didn't know what to do with it. And here comes Evans with the ball. Ahead to Goldwire. Drain for three. And Sasser comes away with a rebound. Three on three. Sasser spin move. Got right by his man too high off the glass. Missed the shot. Whistle blows foul called against Carrasco. Texas Tech is one of those teams that in transitions, James Dickey will let his team play. Gives them a lot of freedom that time. Sasser went one-on-one -on -one to create a shot. In the half-court game, five-on-five, -five, they'll set up and they'll be very disciplined in their offense. Substitutions as Jeremiah Johnson comes into the ballgame, replacing Carrasco Moore also back into the ballgame. It's been one of the characteristics for Houston all season. They've really substituted a lot. Thirteen players played in their game Wednesday against TCU. And uh, Alvin Brooks is simply trying to find some combinations for this team. They've shot 40% on the year, given up 81 defensively. He's just trying to find that mesh that fits and works for his Houston team. Jermaine Johnson, incidentally, not Jeremiah, let me correct myself. Jermaine has a brother on his team, also Curly Johnson. Tech bat, back to man-to-man. -man. Barry switching their defenses, trying to keep Houston off balance. Evans penetration and kick out for Wafer, and we've got a foul. And it's going to be offensive, away from the ball. And that's an excellent job by Mark Davis. As we've talked, Mark Davis is very versatile, does it all. He's blocked his, blocked his shot already, had a dunk already. Now he takes the charge, and he's really the on-the-floor leader for this Texas Tech team. Coy Smith for three. Good three-point shooter, and he sticks that one. Best three-point shooter on the Tech team, well over 35%. The other players are under 30%, and that's probably why Houston has been zoning early in the game. Shot at 44% for the year last year, and is right around that mark this year. Doing a nice job defensively on this man. Goldwire's not had a lot of opportunity. More. What he is doing is finding the open man. He really runs our offense well, gets them into what they want to do, and as you said, he really finds open people on the floor for shots. Trying to get it inside, Wafer steps in front, but also steps on the end line. The zone's been pretty effective so far for Houston. They've collapsed it in, they're not fouling out of it, uh, trying to prevent penetration by the, by the Texas Tech team, and they don't feel like Texas Tech is really a great three-point shooting team, and they're taking their chances on those three-point shots. Angel Sands in the ballgame now for the Houston Cougars, Sands from Madrid. Smith for three again, a little hard. And a fight for the rebound, and Ham got it, but also got it on the end line. It'll be Houston's ball. Houston is already for six turnovers. So we mentioned they have 30 against TCU, but it didn't help in the end line. Conversely, Texas Tech played very well against the Baylor team, had a 16-point lead with nine minutes to play, and lost the game by a point. Really a tough loss for, for uh, Texas Tech in that game, one that they really felt got away from them. Davis got a good look, but missed the shot. And here's Sands. Swatted away from behind nicely by Coy Smith. And Goldwire reaching in fouls Davis. Game's a little bit uh, out of sync. Both teams are trying to run. They're changing their defenses, and it's a type of game where both teams are trying to just settle down and get into some type of rhythm. Right now, we've got uh, Houston in a zone defense again. Texas Tech's been changing back man to man. Hughes puts it on the floor, gets into the lane, throws on an off balance left hand, and it won't go. It's going to be out of bounds to Texas Tech. Nice penetration that time by Lance Hughes, created by the skip pass. Anytime you skip past the ball over the defense, it stretches the defense, opens it up, and allows open opportunities on the penetration. Hughes nails that three. Hughes got a good look that time. 
Hughes with five points, his first field goal. Wafer sticks another, and he's helped off the bench. Sand from behind. Texas Tech running their zone offense. Again, trying to get it inside the middle of the zone that time to Ham, but the strength of their offense right now is going to be Hughes shooting from the outside, penetrating, also Drain and Davis trying to do the same thing, breaking the zone down on the dribble. Drain back into the ball game for Alvin Brooks now as Wafer leaves, and he contributed. Houston now up to 50% from the field, 7 of 14. Texas Tech continuing to struggle, 6 of 17 shooting. There's Drain stepping in front. Got it back to Smith, however. The lob, and nobody there. Everybody knew that that lob was coming, except Davis, for whom it was intended. Take a look at Davis on the baseline here, Joe. Well, Mark Davis again, very versatile athlete. Uh, really knows how to play the game. Intelligent youngster, and uh, right now he's just trying to find the open spot. They're looking for the lob to him, but really he wasn't open. The ball was thrown over his head. Lloyd comes back into the ball game now, and Ham leaves for the Red Raiders. Turnaround, nice stroke. Tim Moore, excellent player. He's a guy, again, that became eligible at midterm, and a guy who uh, came in and that time scored a good turnaround jumper. He's got eight points in the ballgame so far. Again, Texas Tech is trying to spread the defense out by skipping the ball from side to side. And there's that guy, Davis. Great baseline move. Found him on the baseline that time, Barry. He just turned and exploded to the basket for the dunk. Very, very versatile player. Effective off the dribble, can shoot the jumper, and just a great all-around player. A junior college All-American a year ago here in Texas. Our Los Angeles Raiders still handling Buffalo at Buffalo. Nice baseline move that time. You can see what Houston is trying to do offensively. Running a little motion game, but trying to get the ball down low inside. Last two baskets that time coming inside by Moore. Uh, and also Johnson. Sasser thought about it, now steps in and kicks it back for Collins for three. He misses off the right side and Drain clears. Excellent look that time by Goldwire to get it to Sands, who was hammered. Well, you've just seen the thing that Anthony Goldwire does so well. He Got the ball on the outlet pass and just exploded down the floor. He's got such great speed taking the ball to the basket. Draws the defense to him and then kicks it across the lane to Sands for the easy layup opportunity. Anthony Gowire, probably one of the most athletic point guards in the country and a guy that the NBA scouts are really taking a hard look at there. Probably with good reason. No question about it. Being asked to do an awful lot on this Houston team this year. One of only two returning starters, he and Drain, off of last year's team. And He's being asked to do a lot, and he's doing it. Lance Hughes will sit, and Smith will come back into the ball game. Joel Wire's a young man that played on the 36-0 high school team down in Riviera Beach, Florida, Sun Coast High School. Had a great senior year down there. Houston again in that full-court zone trap. Texas Tech gets it to the middle of the floor and does a good job breaking it. Sasser open for three. Too hard over everything. Sasser's shooting was continued. Drain open. And the rebound finally controlled by Coy Smith. Gets it ahead to Collins. Texas Tech having a hard time getting the ball inside. There they do that time, but you see the defense collapse around Davis and cause the turnover. Yeah, essentially Houston saying, go ahead, go ahead and beat us on the perimeter if you can, and they haven't been able to do that. Exactly. Not shooting the ball well at all. Drain with two tries underneath that won't go, and the long rebound to Collins, who saves it, but saves it for more. Yeah. 
Carrasco faces up. And a foul called. Underneath. And they got Carrasco. What a reminder, Big Monday presented by Bud Light. ESPN triple header coming your way. We get underway in the Big East with Georgetown and Seton Hall. That's at 7.30. Arturis Kanishevis. Well, headline that one. Then it's out to the Big Eight. Kansas City. Uh, Kansas City. Kansas State. City, State. What's in the name? <laughs> and Kansas, ranked number three, and probably will move up. That's at 9.30. I get to go to Las Vegas. It'll be New Mexico State and UNLV. UNLV struggling a little bit, and New Mexico State probably the team to beat in the Big West. And that's a tough miss there for Texas Tech. Mark Davis, the front end of the one-and-one. One. Really got to make your free throws in a close game, which is what we've got right here right now. Right now, the Red Raiders being outplayed by the Cougars. Tech trying to step up their defense right here. Much more pressure out on the perimeter. Carrasco, and I think Lloyd got a hand on that. And coming away with it is Sasser. One on three, Sasser should wait for help. They get it down low to Lloyd. And Lloyd kicks it back for nobody. Goldwire is going to run it down. Great effort by Goldwire. Except he missed the shot, but he gets it back and draws the foul. No, they're going to call it on Goldwire. Tough sequence for Goldwire, who did everything except finish. Made a great play. He ran down the loose ball at the other end, caught Texas Tech asleep. I think Tech thought the ball was going to go out of bounds. Goldwire ran it down, missed the layup, and then actually jumped into the defense on the offensive foul. And I thought Harold Allen did a good job on the call. Time out, 636 remaining first half. Houston 23, Texas Tech 20. Back with more from Lubbock after this. in this Italian opera to prove how Italian subways Italian subs are. For a limited time, enjoy our spicy pizza sub or Italian steak, both with Carnes marinara, sauce from a recipe by our founder's mother. So open up and say ciao. New hot Italian subs from $1.69 at Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. Bravo! Subway Georgetown in Republic Square, across from Eagle Field. Dan, I'm Mr. Hewitt. Seems like we bring a lot of new cars and trucks to Georgetown. You sure have been, Dan. We're selling more new cars and trucks than ever. The factory is sending extra shipments of Suburbans, extended cabs, and all models of passenger cars. Come on to downtown Georgetown for your best deal and great service. Don Hewlett Chevy Old Buick, downtown Georgetown. I was Michael Jordan in 1982. Well, NC would have beaten Georgetown not by one, but by two! 15 seconds. Jordan's open. But to the horror of 65,000 screaming fans, he stops, takes two giant steps back, and pops the three. Two, one, <laughs> yes! North Carolina wins it all! I do! Of course, there was no three-point line at the time. But that's what college basketball's all about, taking chances. We welcome you back to the Lubbock Municipal Coliseum. They call it the bubble here, and inside the bubble, the bubble of the Red Raiders about to burst here. They're being outplayed by the Houston Cougars. Well, Barry, here you see Bernard Lloyd making a bad pass against the trapping zone inside. Goldwire does a super job running it down. He misses the layup. His great hustle gets it back for him, and then he jumps into Davis, as you see there, and he initiates the contact, so that was an excellent call by the official Harold Allen. Shooting percentages, both teams very shooting very poorly. 40% by Houston, 9 of 22, and Texas Tech, 7 of 20, 35%. And uh, both teams just not shooting well. The zone defenses have been effective for both teams, especially for Houston. It's one of those games where each team waiting for the other to make a move, and neither team has so far. They're kind of both in neutral at this juncture. just kind of sitting here like a theater. They, they really are. Yeah, they, they don't have anything to cheer about. And they dribbled it on the line. Just another sloppy turnover. Sands remaining in the ball game. 
This is as quiet as you will hear this place, I promise. There is a player control foul on Sands. I think they got him with the offhand that time. Well, everything that can go wrong for both teams is going wrong. That time Sands just simply driving to the basket and he pushes off. It's kind of a chintzy foul, but those are the kind of things that are happening today, and that's why the game has been kind of slow so far. Texas Tech hopefully can hit some three-point shots for them, which will really get the crowd into this game. They're going to have to do that to loosen up the zone. Yeah, because what Cougar, uh, the Cougars are doing is saying, go ahead and beat us from beyond the arc. And Sasser has not had anything. Hughes made one. Coy Smith made one. Collins hasn't been able to do it. And really, excuse me, Barry, really, Texas Tech doesn't have real good inside players who score a lot. So it's their perimeter game that does it for them. And Smith misses the three there, but they'll get a second chance. Ham, turn around the lane. Let's go. Wait for the rebound, but did he push off? Yes, he did. Of course, the weakness of his own defense is that rebounding. You don't have clear-cut blockout responsibilities in a zone, and consequently, the offensive team can pick spots in the lane to get offensive rebounds. Tough year for Alvin Brooks in his first year, as you can see. Alvin walking around all day with the look of a man waiting to have a vasectomy. Well, here's a guy that spent 12 years as an assistant coach, both at Lamar and Houston. He grew up 15 minutes from the Houston campus, and he's been thinking about this opportunity all his life has been preparing for it he just has a team that really hasn't been able to put it together yet this year especially on the offensive end one point ball game nonetheless his team leads it seven losses in a row for the cougars and they have been close to too many of them wafer missed the shot wafer gets it back and it's foul he'll go to the line on a reminder, a little football action coming your way a little bit later on today. Tonight, you're going to see some of the nation's finest football players showcase their talents in the annual East-West Shrine Game. That's presented by Buick tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Strong legs run so that weak legs may walk. One of the great classic all-star games. One of the first, too, if I remember right. One of the oldest out in San Francisco. Your neck of the world. Yep. Herschel Wafer at the foul line is one of many excellent junior college prospects out of the state of Texas. Both these teams have excellent junior college players that they've recruited here out of Texas. Texas, one of the stronger areas in the country for junior college basketball. Wafer at the free throw line. Wafer has given Alvin Brooks some productive minutes, but misses the free throw. Collins for three, it won't go. Sands a long rebound, two on two. Evans down low to Carrasco, turned around and turned right into Lloyd. Excellent defense that time by Bernard Lloyd for Texas Tech. Good double team inside the low post. Hughes on the baseline, surrounded, drew the foul. I think they're going to get wafer. And that's the thing you've got to do, Barry, to beat the zone. You've got to take the ball to the basket and break it down on the dribble. Hughes did that that time at the tail end of the fast break caught it on the wing and just exploded down the baseline trying to draw the chart draw a foul or get a three-point play tim moore comes back into the ball game leading score for both teams in this game Moore has eight points and hughes misses the free throw hughes as we've said has virtually made a career against this houston team he's played against them four times this is his fifth he started out with a 12-point game that wasn't really too much to brag about and at 26 27 and 27 again Averaging 23 points a game against the Houston Cougars and yet to get on track today. Carrasco again. He has trouble playing with his back to the basket. That's something they're working on. But Sands sticks the three. And Houston really making a concerted effort offensively to go inside. They've been inside almost every trip down. But that time they played inside out to Sands and he hit the three. That's a nice shot for the Houston team. Davis takes it to the baseline. That's worked three times now. Not a bad idea. I'm a little bit surprised to see Houston continue to press because that's where Texas Tech has been able to get their offensive shots. Sands down the lane and it swatted away. Moore picks it up and misses the shot. Carrasco over the top, but a foul against Carrasco. Carrasco out of Bogota, Colombia. Also earned letters in soccer. As Buffalo now ahead of the Los Angeles Raiders, as you see, with just over three minutes remaining third quarter. 
I bet it's a fairly cold in Buffalo today, you reckon? I would imagine so. <laughs> it's fairly cold down here. It is. 11 below in Chicago. Coy Smith at the foul act. freshman of the year last year, the other Lenny Holly, who we talked about in the opening, who uh, was here at Texas Tech, is no longer with the team, left before school started. Carrasco, as you saw, will sit, most likely for the remainder of the half, with three personal fouls. There he is, out of Bogota, Colombia. And we got a timeout as Smith converts. We'll have a look at the scoreboard, showing the Red Raiders now back in front by one. It's 27. 26. New popcorn shrimp at Long John Silver's. By the pound or by the meal, you get a lot for a little. But this offer won't last long, so pop in soon. You don't think a car can change your attitude? Mm -hmm. Watch. Take this guy, give him a probe, lose the sweater, change the hair, voila! Or her. Give her an Escort GT, lose the glasses, make over city, and bingo! Whoa, this guy needs a ranger bad. Let's do that grunge thing, and off you go. A lot of work here. Definitely Mustang. Lose the pocket protector. Heck, lose the whole outfit. And throw that man away. Ford. Serious attitude adjustment. Today, a woman needs a life insurance plan of her own. State Farm sells life insurance from an agent who's there for you today and there tomorrow, too. You see, we start you out right with a plan specifically designed for a woman's needs. One that protects the people who count on you for so very much. And the State Farm agent will be there tomorrow, too, as your life changes, to keep that plan working for the people you love. State Farm sells life insurance. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denorex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denorex has something extra that tingles. That's why I started using Denorex. No flakes, no itch. Denorex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Barry Tompkins with Joe Dean. 27-26 ballgame, 3.53 remaining first half. Both these teams kind of waiting for one another. Yes, there have been a lot of turnovers, Joe, but most of the turnovers have been accidental turnovers, not forced turnovers. Well, unforced turnovers, and they're just having a hard time getting in sync offensively. Neither team has been able to really create a run, and, and for Texas Tech, they need to do that to get this crowd in the game. Texas Tech has taken Mark Davis out of the point guard position. They've been running along the baseline, and that has worked to a certain degree. It has. Mark Davis, obviously, is the key player for Texas Tech, and... He's a guy they want to get the ball to and give him some space where he can create some shots on the dribble or in transition. It's just as I say that, they move him back to the point <laughs> position as Collins has taken a seat after a long stint. But we've got an excellent matchup. Two number 42s guarding each other. Mark Davis and Jesse Drain, and there they are right there. Davis got a piece of it, but he also got a piece of Drain. Interesting, not only are they both 42s, but they're built very similarly, too. They really are. Both about 6'7", both very athletic. Both uh, like to put the ball on the floor or shoot the three-pointer. Drain, the leading three-point shooter in the league last year, as we mentioned. But uh, those guys, when they go against each other, you'll see some the competitive juices really pick up a little bit. And I think that time Davis tried to block that shot. Here's an interesting story, too. Drain at the line last year was an 80% free throw shooter. Coming into the ball game this year, he's 55%. And this is his first shot here. How does that happen in this space of it, year? It's just a lack of concentration. Uh, you, you, you get on roads kind of like putting in golf. When you, when you putt bad in golf, you putt bad for 18 holes. And free throw shooting's a little like that. Once you miss a few, it's kinda, you kind of get on a road. A bad road. <laughs> They really jump out at Sasser. They're not giving him the perimeter. Smith, a long three. Well, that's certainly a bright spot for Coach James Dickey. He wants to see them open that zone up for that three-point shooting. And uh, that time, Smith did it. One thing I do feel James Dickey and the Red Raiders have done is come through with their game plan, and that is get the ball out of the hands of Goldwire. Other people have beaten them, but it hasn't been Goldwire. That's exactly right. Sasser. Cut off nicely. Hughes lost the handle. Three on four on two now for Houston. And Evans pulled up. Pulled the dribble up for some reason. Both teams have missed a lot of times when they have the numbers. 
And there you see the problem for Houston all year, Barry. It's the reason they haven't shot well. They, they've struggled scoring on the offensive end. They had the fast break that time in numbers, but just could not finish the play and get a good, clean shot off on the offensive end. Both teams shooting poorly. Texas Tech at 33% right now, and Houston at 38%. really having a hard time finding the seams of the zone. Houston covering up very, very well out of their zone, very active. Overplaying the ball there as it starts ran step in front. Smith for three again, misses that one. They're gonna let him shoot that shot all day long. Smith has beat them twice on it, but I think as long as the game is close, Houston will stay in that zone defense. They won't come out of it unless the game kind of gets away from them. But right now, it's, uh, it's close and they'll stay in it and say, hey, shoot the three. We don't think you can make it. More on the block. Good job by Lloyd that time just to defend. And a traveling violation on goal line. Well, just a reminder that coming up at halftime, Chris Fowler is going to bring you up to date on the top 25 teams, highlights all the scores, and, of course, an update on the football game that is going on. The Raiders and the Buffalo Bills, of course, later this afternoon, the New York Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. Fowler was up and good that time. Davis, who really has been the offense. I believe that's the first perimeter shot by Goldwire, coming off a little screen on the basketball. And that's only his fourth point. Again, Texas Tech's done a really good job on goal wide, which is the key point in their game plan today. But that time, uh, he nails the jump shot. They've got to get goal wide going a little bit offensively to, to help their team. Well, like all the good players, he's contributed four rebounds. He's got five assists in the ball game, even though he only has four points. There's Davis, nice little jump stop, and a better rejection that time underneath by Moore. Well, that's exactly right. It's a good point, Barry. It's, it's the thing that winners do. They... They do everything on the floor, play both ways. Here you see on the replay, Mark Davis taking it inside, Wafer on the rejection. But that's what Texas Tech wants to do offensively, is attack the basket and try to break the zone down on the dribble. They're just taking everything away in the interior. And Hughes made a top three with a man in his face. Hughes with 11 points, a quiet 11 points. Moore across the lane, rejected by Lloyd. Lloyd doing a nice job down low defensively for the Red Raiders. Smith pulls the trigger from three and gets it. Only 27 seconds in the half, and now the crowd finally gets into the game. Back-to-back -back threes. Goldwire gets it to Moore on the baseline. They have 19 seconds, and they'll play for the last shot. Goldwire, an off-balance shot that won't go with eight seconds left, and the Red Raiders got a chance now. Sasser pulls up, won't go, short, missed everything, still one second left. And the Red Raiders with a quick close to the end of the first half and jumped out in front of the Houston Cougars, 38 to 29, and they did it from the perimeter. Finally, shots starting to fall. Hughes now with 11, Corey Smith with 11 points, and Mark Davis getting that quick step to the baseline. That's been the offense for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. They lead it 38 to 29 at halftime. 38-29, Texas Tech to the studio now, and Chris Fowler. Chris. Hey, Barry, gotta wake up those folks in Lubbock. Their team up by nine at the break. And the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report Stick around. Highlights from all over the place. ACC, SEC, Big 8, Big 10, all coming up.
Roy Smith playing, and now they played a number of different people on him. Goal wire for three, and of course that missed it. Drain, however, will give the Cougars a second ch chance. Pardon me, Evans, and it's stuck up there. <laughs> that is a jump ball call, and on the jump ball, the arrow goes to the Texas Ra Red Raiders. Texas hey, Tech Red Raiders. You got to be awfully good to shoot one like that. That's to tough. Get it isn't stuck. It? That's that's hard to do that. Houston will zone trap to start the second half again, trying to force some turnovers which would help their offense on the other end. Smith way up top now as they come out and challenge and make them start the offense a little bit higher than perhaps they want to. Sasser was not a huge factor in the first half. Well, Sasser did have five rebounds. Pulls up that time, can't get it. And the loose rebound finally down to Evans, but Ham steps in front nicely to Davis, who steps in, and no basket, they say. Push foul before the basket for the shot. Well, again, you had a situation where it was a scramble play. Davis catches the ball and just simply drives it right to the basket. He's going to use his athletic ability to jump over the Houston defense to score his basket. Hughes missed the shot, but Sasser with another offensive rebound, and you indicated, Joe, that is the real key for the Red Raiders. And another turnover as Davis just simply lost the ball. Here's Goldwire in traffic too hard, but he drew the foul and will go to the line for two. Well, that's where Goldwire is most effective. He has not had that many opportunities today to take the ball in transition off of a turnover or a long rebound. That time he had it, and he got to the foul line and drew the foul. James Dickey is a product of the Hank Iba coaching tree. He has come through the Hank Iba system, the, the great Oklahoma State coach, worked for Eddie Sutton at Kentucky and Arkansas. And one of the key characteristics of a Hank Iba coach type team is defensive transition. They just don't allow the offensive team to get out in transition and to create those opportunities for themselves. So Goldwire makes it a 38 to 30 ball game. Hughes gets the Sasser for the pull-up. Very good ball movement that time for the Red Raiders. Excellent execution, Barry, in their, in their full court press offense. They get the ball to the middle of the floor, attack the basket, and play three against two. Goldwire, fall away. He's having a struggle for his shots. Here come the Red Raiders now. All the way to the basket, and player control foul. That time, Davis was completely out of control. Out of, out of control on the break. Here you see, he probably should have stopped and taken a little bank shot, but the Houston player that time, Carrasco, did a great job of stepping out, taking that defensive charge, and that's the one thing a coach really loves to see is a player that's willing to give up his body for the good of the team. that time by Sasser. Sasser doing very much what we talked about with Goldwire, where he's not scoring a great deal, he's still contributing. Now they have Collins at the point again. Well, they're trying to create some wing shots for Smith right there, who nails it on the left wing, and Lance Hughes on the right wing, and they have had Smith on the point, but with Collins in the game, it allows Smith to move to the left wing, and Hughes to the other wing and opens up the three-point opportunity. Smith's fourth three-pointer of the day. He has 13 points. Again, Sasser overplaying more. They overplay him to the right side. But this time, he was a little too aggressive and fouled him. We've talked about Anthony Gowire a lot. One of the the, the, the question marks about Anthony Gowire is his perimeter shooting. How good does he shoot the ball from the outside? He's very, very quick. He runs the break, scores in transition, penetrates. 170 assists last year, as we talked about. But he's really never developed a great, great outside shot. And a five-second call. Did not get the pass inbounds quick enough. And another turnover. Texas Tech doing a good job of playing the passing lanes, 
overplaying passes, forcing Houston out of what they want to run. And when you take the ball out of bounds, you have five defensive players in the court against four offensive players. Texas Tech took advantage of that that time and forced the turnover. Herschel Wafer back into the ball game as Carrasco leaves. Davis is back in the ball game for the Red Raiders. And Houston has gone to the man-to-man -man right here. Texas Tech, beautiful job executing back screen in the man-to-man -man offense. First time against it, and they got Smith open for the layup. Nice recognition that time. And we've got a timeout with 16:37 remaining in the ball game, and the Red Raiders starting to run away and hide from the Houston Cougars. It's Texas Tech 45, Houston 30. We'll be back. Canada the birthplace of ice. Molson Ice, ice brewed to be colder and bolder, yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice, from the land where ice was born. With full confidence, I submit to you an affordable economic package. Senator, this will cost only $10.99. $10.99! <laughs> The man's an idiot. I'll say it again. Somebody call security. $10.99. <laughs> what could anyone possibly get for $10.99? I'll give you my boy. <laughs> Bigfoot Pizza from Pizza huh? Hut. With that special crust delivered for only $10.99. Hey, Dad, who's going to sponsor this <laughs> bill? <laughs> Bigfoot Pizza, a legendary value. <laughs> the universe is information. Information can be digitized. Digital data can be transmitted. Every book, every movie, every piece of knowledge in the universe, right here. Canada, the birthplace of ice. Molson Ice, ice brewed to be colder and bolder, yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice, from the land where ice was born. Texas Tech's players do a great job recognizing the changing Houston defense. That time, Houston switched to man-to-man, -man, back screen on the baseline, got Coy Smith open inside for the layup, and that's just an excellent job of coaching by James Dickey to recognize that change and to create the layup opportunity for his team. Well, the SP's coming up here on ESPN. Here's the dumbest side just to get air time. You gotta like it, and you gotta give it to A for creativity also. It gets my vote. It also got on the air. <laughs> Houston really needs a basket right here, Barry, to stop this run because Texas Tech is really going strong. Seven to one run in the last three minutes and 23 seconds has given them this 15-point lead. And remember, they ended the first half with an 11 to one run. Evans misses. More of a nice rebound. He did a good job of keeping more off the block when he catches the ball and forcing the Cougars into forced shots. Well, it's just surprising that Houston has not been able to get good shots for Jesse Drain and Anthony Goldwire. Uh, and that's really the problem. They've got other guys shooting the ball that they may or may not want them to shoot the ball. And you've got to get your best players the ball where they can score. How about that one by Coyce by Ham? What a finish. That's what I'm talking about. Darwin Ham, high school teammate of Jesse Drain from Saginaw, Michigan, gets the crowd fired up here. They let him go. No help. Try to trap Smith. He gets it over to Sasser. Keep that trap nicely. And down the lane, Sasser. And Texas Tech has done a great job in executing their full court press offense. That time they got the ball again to the middle of the floor, which is where you want to get the ball against the press. Attack the basket and created a two on one fast break situation. Evans. And finally hits one for three. Evans first basket. Nice job that time by Drain, but they call it travel. Interesting. Hughes turned around, saw Drain, and traveled. North Carolina big over Clemson in the second half. Arkansas just three over Auburn. You know that team pretty well. Sure do. Auburn uh, has been a tough luck team, lost two overtime games in their first three conference games, and it would be a big win if they could knock off Arkansas. Xavier just two over Butler. It's been a long dry spell for Butler since beating Indiana in its first game.
They got Darvin Ham for the foul that time. Wafer down on the block. Excellent defense by Texas Tech, overplaying those passing lanes. Goldwire in traffic. Nice move by Goldwire. It's a great move, but again, he's having to do it all on his own, and he's having a hard time finding shots in his offense, but he did a great job that time. He is very, very quick. I had an opposing coach tell me Goldwire is so quick he can play ping pong by himself. <laughs> Big time, Coy Smith rings it up. 18 for him. Lloyd will come back into the ball game for James Dickey. Darvin and Ham will sit. James Dickey will play about seven and a half, maybe eight players. Doesn't have a lot of depth, but Lloyd, who just came in the game, has gotten eligible at midterm and has really given him some beef up front. It's that half a player that really hurts you, though. <laughs> it's hard to play with a half. Oh, boy. <laughs> Carrasco lets the shot go. This time he takes it. Too long, and Davis the rebound. Side. He, wants, he wants it. He's hungry and there. He's got smaller goal wire on him, so he's got a size mismatch. Tech shooting it very well in the second half. Six of eight. And now seven of nine. And Barry, you'd love to see a player who's hungry for the ball, who wants to score. Davis did a great job getting himself open inside. And goal wire forced the shot. Might have drawn the foul, however. On a reminder that Double dip on Tuesday night here on ESPN and college basketball. This should be a great one. Number 11 and number 9, Indiana and Purdue. Is there a better player in America than Glenn Robinson? I don't believe so. No, he's the best. Both games coming your way live. Kentucky and Florida. Indiana and Purdue first, then number 8, Kentucky and Florida. Florida already a winner and off to its best start in how many years? They are 13 and 2 now. Since 1940-41, the Florida Gators Juan Kruger, another disciple of the Hank Iba coaching tree. Coached uh, for Jack Hartman at Kansas State, played there. And uh, Lon Kruger is one of the most respected coaches in America. Sons comes into the ball game now for the Houston Cougars. Goldwire rattles it in. Eric pass that time. Coy Smith throwing it wide, intended for Sasser. And James Dickey talking to his players, saying, fellas, we've been beating the press by getting the ball into the middle of the floor. That time we tried to go, they tried to go up the sideline and threw it out of bounds. You've got to get back into your organized press offense to attack the full court press. Grab foul. A ticky-tack foul on Davis. Officials out of the Southwest Conference, Dale Kelly, who was a longtime SEC official and officiated in the Final Four several times, is now the coordinator of officials here in the Southwest Conference. Really does a great job. Goldwire in traffic again. Doing a nice job. And Carrasco gets it back as it's swatted loose. And here come the Red Raiders again. Coy Smith comes out of the pack. Coy Smith having a nice game. Really is. Yes. Excellent player. And got to play some point guard for this team, which he's not accustomed to. Ball away from the ball. I think they got Davis down low. Exactly. Well, what you have, Texas Tech, is a five-man motion offense, and a lot of times in the motion offense, you have screens that look like moving screens, and I don't think I've ever seen a game with a team that ran a motion offense where you didn't have one or two moving screen calls. It's the fourth foul on Davis, and uh, they called it on Lloyd, not on Davis, and Lloyd will leave. Sends Tyrone Evans to the line. Tech with some balance scoring. Four players in double figures now. Smith with a big big day so far. Yeah, Smith with 18 hit those three-pointers late in the first half. It's really has been the big key in this game to get Texas Tech to that big halftime lead. Houston's struggling right now, Barry, but help is on the way. They, they've had a great early season recruiting class. It's been ranked as high as fifth in the nation in the early recruiting class. 
couple of guys out of Houston, Galen Robinson and Adrian Taylor, 6'9 and 7'2", respectively. So there is help on the way for Houston. And Robert Kirby and Ray Harton, the assistant coaches at Houston, doing a great job of signing four good players early for the, for the, for the Cougars. Hughes had a good look from the three that missed it, and here's Goldwire, gets it on the wing to Sons to the basket, reverses it in. See, that's the first fast break layup of the game for Houston. And that's something that they want to do more often. Wiles comes into the ball game for the first time. Lloyd Wiles, who had started a couple of games for Alvin Brooks. Here's the trap. They get it to Hughes. Got to hurry. And they get it across the timeline. And the lob for Davis is too high, but a nice effort by Davis to control the ball to Sasser for the basket. Lob the other way, but unable to hang on his way for it. It'll be the Red Raiders' ball. And the Red Raiders now just dictating things. They lead by 13, 11-37 remaining in the ball game. 55-42, Texas Tech. State Farm presents the rules of the game. Today's topic, intentional foul. In this play, an obvious foul is called on the defensive player. But the official rules that it is an intentional foul. What constitutes an intentional foul? <laughs> Tony and Diane get regular insurance checkups, just like they get regular medical checkups. I'm State Farm Agent Carlos Ramirez. I have been their State Farm Agent seven years. A family insurance checkup helps them make sure all their coverages are up to date. It's also a good time to explore options, like how their life insurance plan can be adapted to help with their daughter's college education. I think the family insurance checkup is something everybody can feel good about. State Farm is there. The rule states that a foul shall be ruled intentional even though a player plays the ball if he causes excessive contact with his opponent. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. After you shave, now there's comfort to the power of three. It's soothing edge aftershave with three soothing formulas for three specific skin types. An aloe formula that's alcohol-free to soothe sensitive skin. Extra moisturizers to soothe if your skin is dry. And a cool vitamin E splash for normal skin. Soothing better than ever with the power of three. Edge aftershave skin care for men. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. 55-42 ballgame, Texas Tech over Houston. Anthony Goldwire being asked to do an awful lot for this Houston team, Joe. Well, he really is, Barry. There you see him using his quickness on the drive, attacking the basket and scoring in the penetration. And here he is on the break, feeding his teammate Angel Sands for the layup. He's really good in transition. He has nine points, seven assists, six rebounds on the game, and really is playing a complete game. That's what you want to see out of your best player. We talked to him before the game, and he's perfectly willing to accept the load that has been put on him this year. They graduated four players, remember, and off a pretty good basketball team. And now he is the guy. And he's perfectly willing to accept that. But, of course, when you're the guy, you're going to draw a lot of attention, and that's what's happened in this ball. That's exactly right. Texas Tech's game plan today was to really key on him, keep the ball off of him, and stop his penetration. And so far today, they've done an excellent job doing that. Davis wants the ball on the block. And nice job to step in front by Sands that time. They get it ahead to drain to the basket. Didn't finish. And how many times have we seen that today? And that's the reason why Houston has been struggling all year. Just cannot finish plays. You saw it there with Jesse Drain. Good aggressiveness on their defense, but you've got to make baskets at the other end. That has been in microcosm the story of their season. They get turnovers, but they don't get points off turnovers. See Sasser handling the ball out front in their offense. Texas Tech can actually have anyone out front initiating the offense because it's basically a five-man. One second on the clock, and they miss the shot. Sasser gets it back. New clock. Kick out to Hughes. Foul down on the block. And they got more 
A goal wire they got. The goal wire got caught inside on Mark Davis. The mismatch. Goal wire is only about six foot one. Davis six seven. And so the Texas Tech team was spreading their offense out, trying to isolate Davis inside on goal wire, but Davis drew the foul. Sasser off the inbounds play. Houston man to man the out of bounds play. And Texas Tech really executed a little screen play for Sasser inside for the layup, but on the out of bounds, excellent execution. More on the block, spin move, no help out. I think the good thing that Houston will get out of this game is that they'll they find that Tim Moore is their best low post player. He scored several baskets inside for them today, and he's a guy they need to look more for. Well, saved by Hughes for Troy Smith. They clear out a little bit for Smith. Now Hughes comes over. And Hughes in the laner, in the lane for a floater with the left hand. Fifteen point lead, Texas Tech. Nine fifteen remaining. More to the basket. He's got another. He's very athletic. Uh, posted up strong that time, and again, more the key guy for the Houston offense to score some baskets in the low post. 14 points for him uh, so far in the game. Houston's had a hard time defensively this year. They give up 81 points a game, but they still are very quick in their defense. And you see Texas Tech is having a hard time running their man-to-man -man offense right now. Got a foul once again down low, and again, it's going to be this time against Moore. Tyrone Evans will come on. Angel Sons will sit. Neither one of these teams, Barry, has true post players inside. That big banger type player. Most of their guys are in the 6 7 range, are athletic, and so they're a little bit unaccustomed to playing inside, and consequently, neither team scores a lot in the low post. Great effort that time by Sasser to the basket. But Davis is the guy who made that happen, Barry. He caught it out on the top of the key. It penetrated to the lane, found Sasser inside. Davis is just a great all-around player. He scored every way you can score today. Here you see him finding uh, Sasser on the look-away pass. And Sasser shows his athletic ability in getting the ball in and drawing the foul. 24 points in the paint now for Texas Tech to just 10 for Houston. Sasser with a pretty impressive line so far. From the corner, and Wiles can't get it to go, and Evans comes away with it. Gets in, throws up a wild right-hander that won't go, and here come the Texas Tech Red Raiders. was intended for Davis. Hughes got a hand on it, not knowing that Davis was there, and finally scooped it to him. Hughes is limping a little bit. In fact, he's limping more than a little bit. Sasser off the glass. Nice, nice execution on the offense. They screened across the lane for Sasser and got him open, and here comes Goldwire. Hughes with a left, looks like a left ankle problem. We'll see as soon as they stop action here. But he's clearly hurting. They're going to stop it right now and check him. Chad Collins is going to replace him in the game. He got bumped inside in the lane. And I think he may have a, just a knee into the thigh, Barry. They'll probably rub him down over there and get him back in the game. And we'll take a timeout with 7.39 remaining in the ballgame. 64-46 Texas Tech over Houston. You know, there's nothing quite like the car buying convenience at Classic. With nearly 10 acres of Hondas, Oldsmobiles, Pontiacs, GMC trucks, and now Toyotas, well, there's just no reason to shop anywhere else. Everything, including the Cords, Firebirds, Camrys, plus GMC and Toyota pickups, all with that special one-of-a-kind classic care service. I'm Don Tambor, promising that car buying convenience is just one reason why you'll feel closer to a classic. Exit 254, Round Rock.
Hi, I'm Kenny Bernstein. When I'm not in my dragster, I drive a car probably a lot like yours. I take good care of all my vehicles and change the oil regularly. In my dragster, that means changing the oil after every run and disposing of all of it properly. If you change your own oil, never pour it on the ground or down the gutter. It could end up polluting the land and water. Take it to a collection center for reuse. Remember, dumping oil is a drag. Hello. NCAA basketball rule. Section 3, paragraph A. The shirt shall be tucked in the game pants. Why is this taking up space in the rule book? Aren't there better things to worry about? Besides, what are you going to do about Michigan's uniforms? The shorts shall be tucked in the game socks? Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to think about this. Go, fight, win, I whatever. Well, it's been a tough week for every basketball coach and every basketball player, and in fact, everybody interested in the sport of college basketball this week, the threat of a possible boycott, which has now been diffused. Every coach has been asked about it, and we asked James Dickey. Uh, I'm not in favor uh, of a boycott. I talked to our team, I talked to our coaches, and we felt like our position uh, was to represent this program, uh, the Southwest Conference, our university, uh, and college basketball, uh, and certainly, uh, we were concerned about what was going on, but we felt like it was our job to play. We need a better voice, and I think that goes back to the communication issue, where we communicate with our athletic directors and presidents, uh, and the coaches have more of a voice uh, in the legislative process. And that is something, Joe, that, that seems to be a common thread, that the coaches want more of a voice in the legislative process, and uh, not necessarily my job to make an editorial comment, but I agree. Well, I do, too. Uh, very, as you see, Houston running the break right here with Goldwire. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Shot is up and good by Moore. And Moore showing a little offense here today for Houston. But to get back to that point, I think the thing that frustrates the coaches is that the NCAA convention every year is right in the middle of basketball season, and they don't feel that they have a voice and a say in the rules that affect their jobs so much. So the subject does not drop, and that conversation is certainly going to go on. And the only question is, what is the solution? Well, I really think the solution, Barry, is going to be a total restructuring of, of the divisions of the NCAA. They're talking right now about a super division within the NCAA where the top 80 to 100 schools would get together and form their own policies and regulations. And that's really where we're headed right now. Here, James Dickey said he would not support a boycott. And Alvin Brooks, who was one of the few people in the BCA who has said, I too will not, repeat, not support a boycott. Alvin Brooks in his first year as head coach at Houston. Well, an even deeper issue is, is, is not only financial, but gender equity plays a part in that. If you add men's scholarships, you've got to add women's scholarships. And, and, and the financial end becomes more and more of a burden to a lot of these schools. A lot of the predominantly black institutions actually voted against the 14th scholarship. So uh, it's not really a racial issue. It is, it is simply an economic issue and, uh, and in many cases a gender equity issue. It's an issue that will be discussed for a long time, and I don't think a solution is forthcoming in the immediate future. And somebody's going to get their nose out of joint no matter what the decision ultimately is. That's exactly right. Oh, we have a ball game to watch. Do we? <laughs> Evans takes it to the basket. If Texas Tech has its way, it's not going to be a ball game. They lead it by 14, 64-50. is not returned. It did not appear that his injury was serious. Travel call against Sasser. Sons will come back into the ball game. And just a reminder that coming up later tonight at midnight, we take out to Salt Lake City. Rick Majerus, one of my favorite guys. In fact, two of my favorite guys. Rick Majerus and Gary Colson, the coach of Fresno State and Utah, respectively, will get it on. Greg Bolajak and John Albright will probably be on hand for that one. Two pretty colorful guys there, Majerus and Colson. Gary's a little bit aggressive. I like those sweaters that Rick wears, though. He fills them out very well. Hard to find those puppies, I'll tell you. There's a lot of naked sheep running around. Hughes is back in the ballgame. It's good to see Hughes back. He uh, 
Still limping a little bit, though, Gary, as you see, and they're going to have to keep a close eye on him. He's had an excellent ball game. Up and good by Goldwire that time, and that's from the first perimeter shot I can remember Goldwire making in this ball game. Now to an 11-point game, and this one is not quite yet in the bank for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Houston just trying to make it ugly. They're, they're scrambling in their pressure, double-teaming the ball in places on the floor that, that you wouldn't expect, and just trying to make it a, a hully-gully scramble type of game so they can make a furious comeback here. But 11-point lead is not that much with still 5.43 to go. Tim Morris picked up his fourth foul, and he's been very much a factor for Houston, particularly in the second half. Early in the ballgame and then in the second half. Well, there's no question, he seems to be their best low post player, and they really went to him a lot today, uh, just not enough so far. I mentioned earlier, he didn't become eligible until the 17th of December. Didn't play basketball at all last year. Graduated from Gulf Coast Junior College in Mississippi, but didn't play ball. Another product of the Houston High School basketball system. Alvin Brooks is a product of the Houston system. Played at Wheatley High School for the legendary Jackie Carr, and... Some great, great players have come out of the city of Houston throughout the years. One of the problems, however, that the Southwest Conference is suffering lately is most of the great basketball players that come out of not only Houston, but the state of Texas in general are not staying in the state of Texas. That's exactly right. Evans, tough shot off the glass, won't go high for the rebound, Davis. I'm not quite sure what that was. Sasser has it knocked away. It's going to be Houston's ball. When you talk about being ugly, that was ugly. Well, it, it, it's, that's what Houston's trying to do, is just to create haphazard-type play, force Texas Tech to come down and shoot quick so they can get the ball back and make a comeback here. Sam's down low to Carrasco to the basket for an easy two. an 11-point ball game. Evans went down hard and is hurt. Well, the Houston bench is hollering for a foul, but really Chad Collins, the Texas Tech point guard, and Tyron Evans actually just got their legs crossed up, and Evans just went down hard, wasn't able to get his hands down before he hit. But I think he'll be all right. Looks to his feet, and will leave in some pain. Wiles comes back to replace him. Evans a tough kid. He's built like a football player and plays extremely hard. He's had a pretty good ball game here today. Buffalo headed, they hope, for another opportunity at the Super Bowl. Tough game. Must have been an exciting game up in Buffalo today. Gonna try to use a little of the clock here as Hughes backs it off. Shot clock now at 12 seconds. Right through the legs of Sasser. James Dickey's pulling his hair out. As you see the replay coming up, he, it's the most frustrating thing in the world when a pass is just not completed, and that's all that happened that time. Ball was thrown between the legs of Sasser. Wiles makes him pay at the other end with a three, and James Dickey wants a timeout with four minutes, 38 seconds left. This is down to an eight-point ball game. It's Texas Tech, 66, the Houston Cougars, 58. In less than two years, MCI saved America more than one billion dollars. Now when you call from over 80 countries, you can take those MCI savings with you. Save as much as 26% over AT&T, calling other MCI customers in your friends and family circle. Save on calls from the U.S. too. Save up to $4.70 on just one 10-minute call to Hong Kong. Call for our free friends around the world card and start saving on calls within the U.S. to over 200 countries and places around the world. Hey, the Miss Perfect pageant. Yeah. For watching hockey. Pageant. Hockey. Let's watch both. Miller Lite presents the Miss Perfect face-off. Okay, by Miss Georgia goes to the corner. She pays the price. Here's the puck coming loose. Nice shot. She scores! Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh! Two minutes for Miss Congeniality. Bad call. Good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? I don't say this to many people, but the job we do is the most important job I can think of. Okay, guys, listen up. I mean, there's no such thing as a B-plus mechanic on this airline. 
Let's do it. Even the most junior mechanic can keep an airplane in this hangar if there's a hint of a problem. You might think a job like this would become routine, but every now and then, I just take a walk through the terminal. And right there, you see what's important. Eastern time tonight, one of the great All-Star games. In fact, I think the original All-Star game in college football, the East-West Shrine Classic, playing it at Sanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California. Some of the best players from around and about the country in college football will get it on before head coaches John Cooper of Ohio State and Lavelle Edwards of BYU. That's at 8 o'clock tonight. Get your guns on ESPN. At least they're not asking for money. <laughs> 12 to 5, Houston, in the last 4 minutes, 22 seconds. And do you suppose that running through James Dickey's mind right now is the fact that his team had a 16-point lead with 9 minutes left against Baylor and lost by 1? That probably has gone through his mind, and I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't explain that exact point to his team at the timeout. And a grab foul on Sons. Not a good foul. Sasser going to the line for Texas Tech. James Dickey in his third year as the head coach of Texas Tech. Took over for a legendary figure here, a Gerald Myers, who was the head coach here at Texas Tech for 21 years. A highly, highly respected coach and was formerly the president of the NABC. It's the front end of a one and one. After this, though, they'll be shooting two. That was the ninth team foul. Houston with a chance to cut an eight-point deficit here. Moore tried to give it up to Goldwire, and they're going to say it's off of Coy Smith. So Houston will retain possession, 19 seconds on the shot clock. Nice look that time inside to Moore, and Goldwire cut down the lane, something they haven't done today, but effective play, just couldn't quite get it. They clear out for Goldwire, and Goldwire smacks into the man, draws the foul, will go to the line. Nice effort that time by Goldwire to force the foul. Well, they did a nice job of isolating Goldwire on the wing. He caught the ball and just exploded down to the baseline. Drew a lot of white shirts, which is what James Dickey has prepared his team to do when Goldwire has the ball. But he did a nice job leaning in, drawing the foul. And there is an arc to drawing fouls. And Goldwire gets himself up to the free throw line quite a bit. So some of the scores, Carolina big time winner over Clemson. And Auburn still playing close with Arkansas. Goldwire's been to the line. 67 times this year, which is quite a bit for a point guard. And a lot of that is because he does such a good job penetrating, and he is so strong with the dribble uh, from a physical standpoint. 12 points for him in the, in, on the day, and 10 assists. Great job of finding his teammates. Making 14 points now to go with those 10 assists as he gets both free throws. Full court pressure now. Six-point ball game, 66-60. Clock not a factor at all. They come up and play Hughes nicely. Just gets it across the timeline. Ham in the lane. No. Sasser second try. No. Ham third try. No. Loose ball. Scramble. Ham again. Foul. Well, what can you say? That's simply just great effort by the Texas Tech team on the offensive board. Just would not be denied. Sasser, Ham, Davis keeping it alive. Here you see the replay. Ham putting it on the board, and they simply just are going back and playing volleyball with this basketball, keeping it alive with their hands. Sasser and, and Ham, excellent effort that time, and good hustle by both teams. Let's give credit to the Houston team. They were almost down and out in this game, 16 points behind, but they fought back and cut it to six. So Ham will go to the line. He will shoot two now as Cougars are up over the 10 foul number, so it's two shots from this point on. There's the line on Ham, got a few boards. So we haven't touched on the great tradition of Houston basketball much today, but Guy Lewis on the other side, uh, the legendary coach at Houston, 30 years, 592 victories, five Final Fours, never got that elusive NCAA championship, but had some great teams here at Houston for many years. Great players came through that Houston program. Clyde Drexler, Team Olajuwon, Calvin Hayes, Don Chaney now the coach of the Pistons. Eight-point ball game, Houston with the ball. Big possession here for both teams. 
Tough shot by Moore. Won't go. Drain tries to keep it alive. Ham controls it. Rebound number 12. Good patience this time by Texas Tech, getting the ball inside. Got it for Davis right where they wanted it, but Davis couldn't convert. They come away again with a new clock. And they'll run it down and try to get a shot in the last 10 seconds of this possession. James Dickey calling the plays from the sideline. Does a great job. Houston's going to have to start thinking about some of the players they're going to foul. And really, other than Lance Hughes, any player on the floor for Texas Tech would be a candidate. They all shoot under 64% at the free throw line. Now, however, they may as well just play defense. Seven seconds, six seconds on the shot clock. Sasser has it swatted away, gets it back, gives it up to Ham, and convert the rebound to Drain. Big time rebound that time by Drain when Houston really ne needed one, and now they need a basket. Looking low. Moore wants help, gets it to Carrasco, right at the elbow, missed the shot. That's a big miss by Carrasco. Had a good look and couldn't get it down. Davis picked clean that time by Drain. The three on two if they push it. Evans in the middle, give it up on the wing. And a foul called underneath off the pass. James Dickey's irate, but I tell you, he's more upset with his own team. They had the ball at the two-minute mark. And really, Davis took an ill-advised penetration in a shot. Here comes Wiles, you see, or excuse me, Evans, you see, on the drive, and he simply just forces his way in and, and puts pressure on the official to have to make that call. And it was a good call. It was a blocking foul. That'll send Evans to the line for big free throws here. Exactly two minutes left. Got the roll, but they say lane violation. Evans actually went across the free throw line after he shot the ball. A little over anxious. I think he thought when it left his hand, the ball, it was no good. And so he's trying to run in and get his rebound. That's exactly what happened. And the ball wound up curling in. A little lesson to be learned there. Hughes with the opportunity jumper off the glass and in. Big shot. That's Hughes, of course, as we mentioned earlier, really has made a career out of having good games against the Houston Cougars. And we got a timeout called by Alvin Brooks. Hughes still limping a little bit, as you can see. And we'll take the timeout. 70 to 60, 10 point lead for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. We'll be back. All pro quarterback, Dan Marino. When the game is over and the pain starts, I want two things for my pain relieving rub. Fast relief and no odor. So I use Sports Cream, a strong pain-relieving rub that doesn't make me smell like a medicine chest. I just massage in Sports Cream for fast, odor-free relief. Cream or lotion, Sports Cream sure gets my vote for most valuable pain, pain reliever. You know, winning a Super Bowl was great, but now I'm winning with interstate batteries. We won the ultimate NASCAR race. We won the Daytona 500. Get an interstate battery wherever you see this sign. We check them before you buy them. For fresh power, guaranteed. How does your Genie screwdrive door opener work? Push the button on the garage and the door opens just like that. As opposed to a chain, and if you've ever seen a chain on a bicycle, you'll know that a jerk, 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 uh, 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 uh. Genie screwdriver, built for a lifetime. Hey, Super Tuesday really is super this week on ESPN. Tuesday night, a number 11th ranked Indiana, number 9 ranked Purdue. That's is underway at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 on the left coast. Glenn Robinson, greatest player in America. I don't think there's any question about it. Travis Ford will lead the Kentucky Wildcats, ranked number 8, against Florida, 13 up and 2 down. That's at 9.30, double dip, Tuesday night right here on ESPN. We'll snuggle up on the couch at home and watch those two with great interest. It'll be two great ball games. Two good games. Houston really needs a basket real bad. They're isolating right now for goal wire on the right side. Drew the block foul again and got exactly what they wanted. They actually put four offensive players on the left side of the floor and said, Anthony, here, you take it, score a basket or draw the foul. And as I mentioned earlier, Barry, he is a great player at, at drawing fouls. Been to the line over 70 times in this early season, which is 
an incredible statistic for a point guard. And very quietly, he's getting the kind of numbers that he came in here with. Did not do much in the first half as Texas Tech really denied him the ball, which is exactly what they set out to do. Minute 25 seconds left. Nine point ball game. Goldwire can cut it for eight. Houston needs a steal here, or they, they need to think about fouling right away with an eight-point deficit. 16 points and 10 assists for Goldwire. Wafer tried to foul him, and he couldn't. Now they get it ahead to hand. Good ball movement. Sasser underneath. Great look that time by Mark Davis to Sasser. Davis has the total package, can do it all. Sasser with 21 in the game and a reach-in foul. Sasser goes over to Davis and said, don't foul anymore. Mark Davis, a young man out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. Went to junior college at Howard College and was recruited to Texas Tech by one of Howard College's former assistants, Greg Pinckney, who is now on the staff here with James Dickey, along with Doc Sadler. Excellent staff by Texas Tech. Do a great job recruiting. They've already signed one player early. Corey Carr from Arkansas. One out of two that time for goal wire remains a nine-point game, but right now Texas Tech driving the bus. Houston's got a foul right away, Barry. Good ball movement by Texas Tech. They can't get to him. And finally a foul on Carrasco. Alvin Brooks is going to have to out on the short end for the eighth time in a row. It has been a very tough first season for him. Well, you really have to feel for him. First year head coach, 12 years in assistant, waiting for this opportunity, and just having a tough time. Really doesn't have the offensive firepower he needs to be successful this year, but as we mentioned earlier, they've done a great job going out and recruiting early in the recruiting period. Have signed four players. Two guys I didn't mention, Damon Jones, 6'3", out of Galveston, and Tommy Davis, a little five. Eight water bug point guard from Los Angeles, Crenshaw High School. A lot of great players come out of Crenshaw High School. One of the high school powerhouses around the country, ranked in the top 20 every year. Fortunately, a lot of them are baseball players, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Terrell Strawberry came out of Crenshaw High School. Got that one down. Houston needs to look for the three-point shot and get a quick timeout. Wiles, give it up to Rayford, and Rayford missed the shot. And this one is just about in the books. 40 seconds left. Ham will pull it out. And now the foul by Wiley on Collins. will send him to the line. Wiles, I beg your pardon. Dad are happy he's at Texas Tech. They're both graduates of Texas Tech University. And Chad Collins, a very nice player, unsung player here for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Gives them good effort every night. 30 seconds left in this one. 75-63 ball game. Nice little off-balance shot going away from the basket by Goldwire. Just shows you his many talents. Goldwire now with 18 points and 10 assists in the ball game. But this one is in the books for Texas Tech with 26 ticks left. And the Red Raiders really gathered themselves just when it looked like there was a possibility that they could have a repeat of the other night against Baylor. Well, the key for them, Barry, was to get Houston out of the zone defense. They did that the last three minutes of the first half. Coy Smith had a couple of threes. Lance Hughes hit an acrobatic three-point shot. That stretched their lead out to nine at halftime. And from that point on, they went out to about a 14-point lead. Houston had to come out of the zone and play the man-to-man. -man. And when that happened, uh, Texas Tech really had too many athletes and too many offensive weapons. Uh, for the Houston defense. And of course, the Southwest Conference, I think it's fair to say there is a great team in the Southwest Conference. All comes down to tournament time. That's exactly right. Uh, anybody, as I said in the open, could step forward and make a run at this championship. Uh, Texas, Bayfield has the best team, but they lost their, their conference opener the other night. Baylor appears to be very good. Rice under Willis Wilson has done a good job. And, and I think this Texas Tech team is really starting to come on. You know, they've had some tough losses this year. Three-point loss here to Wisconsin, a six-point loss here to New Mexico, 
And uh, when you look at those games and analyze their season, you realize they're not too far away from having a winning team. Well, again, it's really cruel and unusual punishment, too, what befell James Dick. You really have to feel for him. You particularly, having been a coach for so many years, you lose a guy who you're counting on and a guy that you're counting on to take care of the ball. And I truly believe, Joe, that basketball in the 90s is really becoming a point guard's game rather than a big man's game. Well, I agree wholeheartedly. It's, a, it's an up-and-down game, and the guards really make the difference in basketball today in the 90s. Bowmeyer with an interception. And Sanz missed the shot. Got a foul underneath with 15 seconds left. This is a good win for Texas Tech. It puts them to 5-7, and 1-1 one one in the conference. Really, I know they, they're still looking back at that Baylor loss there. You mentioned it, a tough loss. Up 16 in the second half at Waco. Lost by one. And this, this could put them 2-0 right now, but they are 1-1. One and one and they're really starting to come on and get better, and I think Texas Tech will be a factor in this league race. They shot 53% in that ball game against Baylor and still couldn't get it done. What James Dickey's doing right now, he's got 30 seconds to replace his, his uh, player who fouled out, so he's bringing his team over just to talk about what they're going to do against the full-court pressure by Houston, really. The game is probably over, but uh, he's still coaching. There more, there's more basketball to play after today, and he wants his players to get accustomed to doing these type of things late in the game in time and score situations. Boy Smith fouled out with 18 points. <laughs> so more at the free throw line just to try to make this less than a 10-point defeat. He hasn't done it yet. There you see Alvin Brooks, Robert Kirby, his assistant, Ray Hart, is sitting there, moving very low right now. And I doubt that they will go foul. Well, just as I'm about to say, they're not going to go foul. They, in fact, do. Wiles commits another foul with 13 seconds left. Well, a lot of people wonder, why would they foul? The game's over, it's 13 seconds. Why would they do that? And, and really, it's still a learning situation. This is early in the season. They're trying to teach the players how to react in time and score situations late in the game. And although we all realize the game is over, they still are trying to condition their players to make the right decisions going down the stretch. Houston bench in a familiar posture. This will now be their eighth straight defeat. Sasser with 23, now 24 points. Offensively, very balanced for Texas Tech. Four players in double figures. Smith left with 18. Sasser with 25. 77-66 ball game. And it is Wiles who will put the finishing touch on this one with three seconds. Now two length of the court to Ham, and this one is history as the Texas Tech Red Raiders have come away with a 77-68 victory over the Houston Cougars. A wrap for us, for Joe Dean, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you next time. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.